Hi there, I'm going to show you one of my own ideas for magnetic shielding using just this steel pipe and stainless steel screw. No more metal or fancy circuitry or superconductors etc. Just this steel pipe and screw which I'm going to cut to a particular size and shape. But first I want to tell you what inspired me and that is these little devices. These are called magnetic bases. Simply push the button and you have a magnetic base. Quite powerful too. Quite very powerful, considering it's only a ceramic magnet inside. Then push the button from the other side and it becomes non-magnetic. In fact, it's so non-magnetic, it won't even lift a paper clip. Nothing. So, as an inventor, of various types of magnet motors I build and design as a hobby. This really inspired me. And I'm always looking for ways to get more speed and power from my magnet motors while using the same battery. Trying to find ways to minimize or eliminate counter EMF and back EMF and other forces which slow down magnets in magnet motors as, as they pass copper coils at certain speeds as well as eddy currents and hysteresis and furling which further complicate what I want to achieve with my magnet motors. So let's open one of these babies up and have a look inside. Here's one I opened earlier which is exactly the same as this. Here's the magnet, it's a ceramic magnet, not so powerful. But when the button is pushed it turns the magnet to this position which concentrates the magnetic flux through this space here. This space here is the key. This space here is brass and as you know brass is non-magnetic. It could be air but then debris would get in and eventually jam it. And so when the bu button is pushed again the north and south poles are facing the steel base which absorbs the magnetic flux providing the metal is thick enough not to get saturated. I'm not going to give you any mumbo jumbo about magnet dynamics because I assume you're watching this video because you too are an inventor experimenting with magnets and copper coil configurations and you already know a great deal about magnet dynamics. So let's get straight to the inspiration. Here I have a 20 by 20 N42 neodymium diametrically magnetized super strong magnet with a hole in the middle for an axle. Stainless steel printer axles are strongest and straightest for small axles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to angle grind this steel pipe to the same size which is 20 millimeters. Let's just mark that up. Roughly I will mark it up later more accurately when I cut it with the angle grinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slit or an air gap almost all of the way down this side here then the other side here exactly parallel. Here's the 20 millimeter space. This space, which I'm just about to show you, is inspired to me from this space, which is this brass space here and here all the way along in almost all magnetic bases. Okay, let's get to cutting. Okay, here's the prototype. Out, still hot from welding. I've welded with a stainless steel welding rod this stainless steel screw onto the soft steel pipe. Observe where I've cut the air gaps as I explained earlier which was inspired from the magnetic base. It's important that the space from the magnet to the steel is at least one or two millimeters. This one's a bit bigger. This way the magnet will turn freely across avoiding contact with the steel. So I'm going to use this hose pipe section to represent air for now. Then we need to determine the north and south on the magnet. Where 
goes here's the south here just mark that up with a pen so that we can see as I turn it there we go that looks almost perfect as you know if you have these M42 magnets they're really powerful so let's put it into its attracting position here and have a look what's going to happen use say some screws and some staples from a stapler and some paper clips this area here is going to attract hundreds and hundreds of no problem have a look at the angle on that, it's just dozens of them I've really concentrated the flux there I've got staples everywhere of course some flux goes around to the magnet but this isn't going to be a problem once I've implemented it into another design we can just still see my fingers have rubbed out the marks of where the north and south was still there. Let's have a look. Where was the south? Here. Yeah, it's still in perfect position. So now I'm going to turn it to its non-magnetic position as I showed you from the steel base a few minutes ago which is going to be in line with the air gaps ok let's do it alright so now this whole area is non-magnetic look nothing in fact it won't even take a paper clip nothing let's try a staple nothing now that is magnetic shielding I've ever seen it. Quite proud of that invention. Did it all by myself. <laughs> so, this is my own discovery from many experiments, which probably already been invented, but it's yours now, and I hope your imagination can put it to good use. I've welded the stainless steel holder in place with threads ready to be screwed onto a stainless steel base ready for experiments. Pay attention to the thickness of the steel pipe which is 8 millimeters thick. I believe this to be adequate for N42s to, to avoid saturation. Remember the hose pipe represents air as I said which should be surrounding its circumference by just a few millimeters to ensure no physical contact between the magnet and the steel whilst in motion. Um, here's some of the remains of other steel pipes I've used in other experiments which failed in order to succeed to this. Two millimeter thick pipe just doesn't work for these powerful N42s. I imagined all kinds of frames to hold the steel halves together and through monotonous tests, this is my prototype result awaiting your imagination. So get to your workshop and give it a try. It won't take more than 10 minutes to build. And remember this key is a stainless steel holder, screw, bolt, and stainless steel welding. I suppose it could even be done with, um, say, two round magnets one north and one south um, counter sunk into some kind of shaft like this one oh gosh. counter sunk holes and epoxied into place similar to this let your imagine be, imagination be limitless I think it's important for me to say that I make no claims about being able to rid or eliminate eddy currents, counter EMF, hysteresis or furling phenomena of any kind with 
any kind of magnetic shieldings at this point in time as I still have hundreds of tests and experiments to do. My point is to inspire your imagination concerning magnetic shielding, especially in electromagnetic motors, and I hope your imagination can put it to good use. Well, I've still got a couple of minutes here on YouTube. I'll give you a quick look at this um, magnet turbine I made. I've got the diametrically magnetised M42s, which I've just been working with, which are set on this electromagnetic copper coil. Here's the commutator. Uh, let's have a look. I've got maybe about a five centimetre space from the diametrically magnetised magnet to these magnets, which are um, also M42s that go north, south, north, south, north, south, all the way around. Then I've got my induction magnets, which are here. I've got 18 of these. These are N52s, a bit more powerful, which induce current in these Biffler wound relay switches, coils, relay coils. I opened them up and managed to put them into place. Um, I've put them into place using a particular setup of delta configuration, which I will do on another video here on YouTube later. Then I am three phase rectifying it through this rectifier, which I have just plugged into my multimeter. Observe my multimeter is on 200 volts DC because I have rectified it. I'm going to give it a little push with my hand and let's see what we can produce. 20 something, 45, 50, 50 volts there, 59 volts, and this is just with a, a simple hand push. I can also adjust the distance, I can make it further or closer. I'm actually about maybe, I would guess, uh, five millimeters away just now which I can bring a lot closer or further away. Let's give it a really big push this time. Uh, what was that? 70 something I thought I seen there. 72, no problem. Um, I use 12 volts when I'm using my, my motors. In fact I use 12 volts on all my motors for experimentation purposes. And that's about all I'm going to say for this just now, because I'm running out of time. And don't forget to look through some of my favourites here on YouTube and the channels I've subscribed to. If you're an inventor using copper coils and magnets, and you're going to love my channel. Bye for now.